Welcome. I'm Joanne Abel, the Humanities Programming Coordinator. And Laura, what is this, our fourth Creek Week program here? I think it is. That's right, you were in the first one, I believe. Maybe fourth. Um, we are always really happy when you choose to spend your evening with the Durham County Library. And I always do a commercial. Those of you that are new here, we do a commercial for the Durham Library Foundation that makes all of these programs possible. And then we also tell you about some upcoming programs. Um, and before I do that, I'm going to actually, since you, you don't, I don't recognize all of you, um, we have a humanities society that my volunteer Helen was telling you about. It's just a way to sign up to, so that you get our mailing, so that you know about our programs. In a, you get a quarterly um, mailing, that's a little echo here. Um, but, and we also, if you attend six programs a year, we have fabulous events and prizes that you get to go to. So if you're interested, just fill it out. It's a free way um, to be involved with the library. So this um, next Sunday, March the 30th, we have a wonderful um, exhibit in honor of, um, in celebration of Farm Workers Awareness Week. We have an exhibit up on the second floor right now um, Jose Galvarez is, has been photographing farm workers for over 20 years. The exhibit will be upstairs from March, it's up there now until April the 26th. We hope you'll come to the program on the, um, Sunday week to hear him talk about Cesar Chavez. Then um, I just want to tell you about one other program that has sort of an environmental theme. April 1, kind of to kick off full frame, we're going to have, um, we're going to show bending sticks. You may be aware of Patrick Doherty and his huge sculptures that he makes out of saplings. He's had them at the Nasher and at the um, North Carolina Museum of Art. And this is a wonderful film if you haven't seen it. It's, and both of the filmmakers will be here to discuss the film. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have each of our um, watersheds in, the, in Durham, in urban Durham, give a little presentation. We decided to do it in the order of the organization's um, age not the speakers end. <laughs> so we're going to begin with the Eno River, and then we're going to go to um, New Hope Creek, and then lastly we'll do Ellerby Creek. And so I'm going to give you the bios of all the people at one time. They're going to each do their PowerPoint. Then they'll come to the table, and we'll do a Q&A. And I'm going to run around with the wireless mic, so please use the mic so we can hear you. We do have um, Jason from Durham Community Media is here. He's recording it. It will be on the People's Channel, and it will be on the library's webpage so you can share it with your friends who didn't get to come. So, Robin Jacobs is the executive director of the Eno River Association. She also practices law, focusing on environmental conservation. Chris, uh, Bob Healy is a member of the New Hope Creek Corridor Advisory Committee and is a professor emeritus of environmental policy at the Duke, at Duke University Nicholas School of the Environment. Chris Dreps is the executive director of the L.A.B. Creek Watershed Association, has previously worked for the National Park Service, and as a director of the Upper Neuse River Basin Association. Welcome all our speakers now, and then we'll thank them at the end. Okay. coming. It's a pleasure to be here and um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit of, sorry, tell you a little bit about the Eno River and the Eno River Association, um, uh, our history with the river. So um, first of all, I just want to give a quick overview and this is not a very good slide, I apologize, but the Eno River starts up here in northern northwestern Orange County and runs through Orange County into Durham County and um, like goes down like this uh, and off down here it empties into Falls Lake uh, before Falls Lake is there of course it poured into the news um, the it's a uh, well actually let me go uh, let's see I'll start, we'll stay back here for a second so um, the Eno is, it's a little bit north of downtown Durham, 
which means that um, it was there was the option to protect its banks and a lot of its tributaries to get started doing that before Durham really grew out in a big way um, to the river. But uh, so uh, what we do and what we have done is a little bit different from what um, Ellerby Creek and some other people have done. Um, we've been more focused on protection than restoration, but protection includes a lot of different things. Um, so it is now, parts of the Eno are very urban. This is West Point Park, which is a Durham City Park. And this is, this is the development that's just immediately around it. And um, a lot of the river, the, back in Orange County, most is a lot of the state parks, and there's not as much development around that portion of the river. But from here east, all along the river, it looks like this until you get pretty close to Falls Lake. So it definitely is an urban river now. Um, when we got started, the um, river wasn't getting a whole lot of respect. The, um, there, were, there was the threat of the planning commission in Durham had approved putting a reservoir on the river and it was, it turned out that it was not a good place for a reservoir. But um, you can see there was a, that car being washed in the river. This is West Point Mill, which is now at West Point Park. And Margaret Nygaard decided that she wasn't gonna let that happen and um, stepped in to organize people and save the river. So, I'm sorry, I, I can probably do two things at once. Um, so, in 1970, we got started in 1966. In 1970, um, the first, oops, oops, this is supposed to be the pointer, sorry. Um, the first thing that happened was right down here, this is West Point Park. The city began buying property for West Point, and this is right in this area is where there was a proposal for an industrial park and the reservoir was gonna be right upstream from that. Uh, the reservoir was partly to serve that industrial park. So this was a great outcome that the city instead decided to buy some of that land and start building the park. Um, the, as that happened, people started to get, to understand how important the river was. West Point Mill was restored people started playing in the river. Um, there were horses in the river instead of cars. And um, that's a picture of some people looking at plants next to the river. So by 1980, um, the Eno River Association was working with state parks. The state, the park, Eno River State Park had been um, officially founded or established by the legislature and the governor and we were working with state parks to buy land along the river. Um, West Point, you can see over there, um, was expanding. Um, and Penny's Bend, the, yeah, um, down here, the light green is core land, um, core of engineers land at Penny's Bend that's also protected and managed by the North Carolina Botanical Garden. So all of that was expanding. Um, the Eno River so Association started having a festival for the Eno as a way to um, acquaint people with the river and get them out there and have them understand how important it was to Durham. Um, the bottom pic picture is one of our annual meetings. And so by 1990, the park continued to expand there's more land down at Penny's Bend. And here you see the first property that was actually purchased by the you know, River Association to hold um, rather than to sell to the park or transfer to one of the parks. This is some plant, plant conservation land. Um, there are some, there's some topography, some soils down near Penny's Bend and Falls Lake that are really unique and um, there are plants there that grow that aren't found anywhere else in North Carolina. Some are, um, you can find remnants out on the Midwest prairies, but here, this is the only place they grow. So that's the first piece of property that we acquired to keep. 
Um, another threat that happened in the 90s was Eno Drive, and I didn't really want those things to <coughs> show up quite so soon. But the, um, <laughs> the Eno Drive was a proposed transportation route that would have cut right along the Eno through West Point Park and through the Eno River State Park in some places. So there were, we spent um, really years with, and some of you were there at meetings, I'm sure, um, agitating, uh, presenting information, standing up to DOT, and eventually, um, these are some of the, uh, well, before we got there, that was in the 90s, and then by 2000, um, the protection of the river was expanding, there's more land that can be thinned, the red are more places that the you know, River Association acquired because nobody else would to hold them. Um, the little green dot over at the corner over there is Okanichi Mountain State Natural Area, which is administered as part of, as part of you know, River State Park. Um, and then by the mid-90s, um, I mean the mid-2000s, you know, Drive was dead and the river was safe from that. There was, um, I'll show you that later. And so this is all the, this is the good outcome. Kids are in the river, the rare plants are protected. We have hikes um, every Sunday afternoon on the Eno and lots of other people use the river and the parks um, too. Little River Regional Park is up in, um, on the Little River, which is a tributary of the Eno. <coughs> and that was a joint effort with Durham County, Orange County, and um, the Triangle Land Conservancy and the Eno River Association to protect that land and, and create another park out there on the river. Um, I think I went backwards. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what, what we do, in addition to protecting the river corridor itself, um, is <coughs> stewardship work days um, and lots of other things. And these are photographs of river cleanups, trail building, general just working out on the land. And you can see we have all ages involved in that. Um, this is where we are in 2014. Um, the park is expanding. There's a lot of more. All of this light green protected land is either counties, core, Orange County, Durham County, um, <coughs> the Eno River State Park, the Eno River Association. All of that, none of that was there in that first map in 1970. All of those green corridors are protected and helping to keep the river clean. And by doing that, helping to keep, the Eno River um, supplies drinking water for Hillsborough. Um, it is a water source for Durham, and of course it flows into Falls Lake for Raleigh and all of its neighbors to use that. Um, another thing that we're working on now is the, this is the, it's called the city has a greenway <laughs> corridor. Um, this is West Point, and then on down, on, all the way down to Falls Lake, there is a corridor that's now completed mountains to sea, to sea trail. That of course will run from the mountains down to the coast, but um, that's a partnership between state parks, mountains, the Friends of Mountains to Sea Trail, um, the you know, River Association works with them, and the city of Durham that provided that corridor. And the trail goes then through West Point, west through, it, sections of it go through Eno River State Park and except for two pieces of land that still need to be acquired, it will soon, once those are in place, it will go all the way from Hillsborough to Clayton. So that is something that you can get out on and it's a great resource. Um, these are the red on these, uh, this map is areas that we that are part of the master plan for the Eno River State Park and areas that we're still focusing on protecting. Um, way the river, it doesn't. The water quality in the river is really good because it was protected so early. Um, but there's still work to do to finish that corridor and tributary streams, septic tanks on a tributary stream, 
um, flow can flow right down in the river, so there's still a lot to do. We're continue to focus on protecting the river corridor. Other ways that the river is protected are um, through the noose buffer rules, noose river rules that um, buffer the stream. There are regulations about how close you can build, how close you can clear, and then the Falls Lake rules, which are uh, <coughs> new and um, haven't come so much into effect yet. But the, so we're doing one piece. Government is doing one piece. And of course, um, Orange County and Durham County, both in the city of Durham, also have protection through zoning. But it really, it's a joint effort, and all of those things are important. And one of the other things that really, really makes a difference are the people who are using it. Um, when they come out to the river, they care, they learn to care about the river. Um, up in the left-hand corner, those are kids learning, catching water creatures and learning about um, how the quality of the water affects them. Um, on the right is our camp, which is a science-based camp that focuses on water quality and efficiency. Of course, the festival um, at the peak area, Eno Environmental Education for Kids, which focuses on water ecology and some more kids in the river. tell you about New Hope Creek, but before I do that, I want to give a little context. Uh, if you want to understand hydrology in Durham, you got to realize that Durham is a creature of the railroad. Durham is Durham Station. When you built a railroad back then, you built it on the ridge line. And even today, and this, this is a simplification, but everything north of the railroad and Main Street drains into the Eno, Ellerby Creek, and it eventually goes into the Noose River and goes into Pamlico Sound. If you just got right on the other side of the ridge line, if you're like around Duke, that water drains into New Hope Creek, which goes into the Cape Fear River and enters the ocean at Wilmington. Completely different system, separated, you know, the, a raindrop separated by half a mile will go one way or the other way. Now also, the Eno is obvious. You pass it a bunch of times, it's nice and straight and kind of big. New Hope Creek is subtle. New Hope Creek drains the uh, eastern part of Orange County and it drains a good bit of uh, southern and southwest Durham County, uh, including the area around Duke. It, uh, New Hope Creek used to be the New Hope River. And then in the uh, 60s and 70s, it was dammed to form Jordan Lake, and it was sort of what was left was demoted to New Hope Creek. But in addition to New Hope Creek, there's a bunch of, uh, of tributaries, and uh, as we have gotten involved in trying to protect the creek, a lot of our effort deals with the tributaries. Uh, Dry Creek, Mud Creek, Sandy Creek. They're very descriptive, actually. <laughs> and places that we don't protect but are very important, uh, Northeast Creek, for example, a little bit farther to the south. So all this is going down to the Cape Fear, and all of this is taking the runoff from an increasingly urbanizing part of uh, uh, both counties. Now, let's see, where's it? Yeah. It's really hard to get a map of New Hope Creek. I spent a couple hours. Now this is a kind of interesting map. It may be hard to read. Do you have a, a pointer on at the top or at the bottom? Where is it? At the top, okay. Wherever it is. Okay. So there is West Point. Now this is uh, this is before this is eighteen seventy four before Durham County even existed. It was part of Orange County. And uh, you have got uh, Durham down here, 
And down here to the south, see you've got these tributaries with the same names, you see the same names as 150 years ago, uh, going down into Nouveau Creek. Now the one place you'll notice Nouveau Creek is when you go on 15501 between Durham and Chapel Hill, you will cross it on a bridge. We have gotten a nice sign there so you know what you're crossing. And this is the sort of green separation, green entrance point to Durham. In the last 30 years, this green has shrunk about 50%. And given the amount of private land there is versus protected land, it's going to shrink by another 30, 40%. Uh, but it still is a break between these two communities. Now, something else that's kind of interesting is there's a geological phenomenon. That uh, star is marks the boundary between the Carolina Slate Belt and the Triassic Basin. We are talking here about tectonic plates, or in the case of to the left, tectonic plates in the basin is something called a terrain. These guys were floating around 200 million years ago and bumping into one another. And the slate belt is rocky. Uh, it uh, has streams that tend to be to run clear. And as soon as you get to the boundary, suddenly you get into the sedimentary basin. And, I mean, Mud Creek and Sandy Creek are muddy and sandy. And the, the rivers spread out. And that's what happens with New Hope Creek. Uh, it, it's very noticeable where uh, Irwin Road uh, crosses New Hope Creek, which is going to be Hollow Rock Park. That is the boundary between these tectonic plates. And if you go to the north in Duke Forest, it's rocky, the water is clear, you can play in the river. As soon as you get below there, suddenly, big floodplain, half a mile wide in places. Just in the wintertime, you can hardly walk back there. Uh, and this is important in a number of ways. Um, and we're going to interpret this geology at Hollow Rock Park. Uh, but just for example, if you're a Native American, where do you want to plant your corn? Down in the floodplain. Where do you want to live? up in the, the highlands and get some pure water. So right around there were Indian trading path, probable Indian settlements. There's a whole lot of interesting history, and colonial history as well. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about uh, what's happened in the last 30 years or so, and the story of attempts to protect New Hope Creek in the context of it moving from a rural suburban landscape to a urban suburban landscape. And it's interesting that, oh, well, here's the, you see the difference between the slate belt, Triassic Basin. Just look south of 15501 and see how it's all spread out and flooded now. And that wouldn't be true if you went up into Duke Forest, same stream. Well, an awful lot of uh, conservation efforts start with some kind of development. And Robin pointed out, you know, a dam on New Hope Creek. This is very different, uh, on the you know, River. This is very different. Uh, the effort to protect New Hope Creek started out with a county inventory of natural areas. It was paid for by uh, the state. It's been updated once. And it was really an attempt to identify the most important important, biologically important areas in each county in North Carolina. And it was published in uh, 1986, and if here's Durham County, now Orange County also is, has part of uh, New Hope Creek, but there's the Eno, lots of good places along it. Here's New Hope Creek going down, these are main stem and tributaries going down to the New Hope River look at all the natural areas, and in fact, uh, really the number three natural area in the whole survey was the New Hope Creek Basin. It's one of the most biologically diverse and important places uh, in Durham. So, uh, in the late 1980s, 
people were seeing that you had this resource and it was the place where the growth was taking place. And so a group of people got together in uh, 1987 And uh, it involved, uh, Robin mentioned uh, Margaret Nygaard, one of our conservation heroes. Well, some of the people who were involved in this meeting were also conservation heroes. Uh, two of them no longer with us, but Hildegard Riles, Becky Heron, Helen Reckow, responsible for so many good things in, uh, in Durham County. And there was a meeting uh, of about 50 people or so over at Githens Middle School to talk about what do we do about New Hope Creek? Well, what came out of there was something very different from either Ellaby Creek or the Eno. It was a plan. City of Durham, Durham County, Town of Chapel Hill, Orange County each put in some money and they commissioned Ken Coulter, wonderful landscape architect, to come up with a plan for the conservation of New Hope Creek. And we had various public meetings on it, and uh, it was adopted by each of the jurisdictions separately in 1992. And then they created the New Hope Creek Advisory Committee, which I've been on for a long time, to advise the jurisdictions on implementing the plan. Now the plan is what you might call a sort of string of beads plan. Uh, you can see how complicated this basin really is, and this is about the best map that exists. But down here, south of uh, uh, 54 and later I-40, the Corps of Engineers has pretty extensive land. We actually thought this was all protected, silly us. We didn't realize we were going to have massive development down there. We didn't know there was going to be South Point down there. It was all very rural. So we were concerned, and up here is New Forest, so that's protected. So we were concerned with really this area in here, the main stem and three of the tributaries. And along this area, Ken had sort of a, a string of pearls idea. The idea was going to be there were going to be four uh, sort of focal points or entry points, each of which would have uh, biological and recreational importance, essentially parks, protected areas. And then between them, to the extent that you could build, sometimes it's soggy and you can't, but a lot of places, you could build a trail to take you by walking, by bicycle, from one to another, and these would connect then uh, with the other transportation trails uh, in the city of Durham and in Chapel Hill, Orange County. This has been our Bible over the years, and we have referred to it again and again. It's just amazing how what good guidance this thing really has given us in dealing with either developments or dealing with what do we do with a protected area. Okay. Had a whole set of goals. One of them was biological, protect habitats, and also migration routes. You want connectivity for the critters to move around in this big landscape. Protect watersheds. We wanted to protect water quality as this urbanized, as especially you had a lot of impervious surface that would wash into this. Protect historic resources, of which there are quite a number in the New Hope Basin. And to secure public recreational access. We felt very strongly this was not just a protection thing, but it really was something that we wanted people to be able to use this. Okay, resource protection. This basically involves 20 years of struggle against various developers. Uh, our, perhaps uh, the high point of this was the, uh, uh, the fight in 1993 over New Hope Commons. Uh, and the uh, place across the street, uh, which has since been developed, but it was proposed in one night, was New Hope Commons, as it exists, across the street, a Walmart and Sam's with a giant parking lot with 1,300 spaces all draining into the creek. And that night, the um, uh, New York Commons, not a bad shopping center despite many faults, was approved. 
And the other one was turned down by the Durham City Council. This is the second time in American history that a Walmart has been turned down. We're rather proud of this. Walmart then went across the street and rented space in the shopping center, and Sam's got built in the old South Square 15 years later, which is a nice location for a Sam's. So this is a, a good story. Um, there was a target proposed there. That was we stopped that. Uh, we uh, I must have testified against 20 developments over the years, city and county. But I'm very proud of the fact that the committee supported at least half a dozen developments, often quite high density, where the developer worked with us. And on Garrett Road, there's a great example of one development was turned down, the two years later, another developer came in, worked with us, he got the same density, and we strongly supported that development. So we'd work with people who would move their density away from the stream, who would uh, uh, you know, put in various kinds of uh, mechanisms to avoid draining from parking lots, etc. We put trail connections to our trails, etc. We protected hundreds of acres of floodplains in the, the course of dealing with developments and developers. So here's good old Nouveau Commons. Right in the back uh, is uh, Dry Creek. And that's all protected, incidentally. Okay. Parks and trails. We had the string of beads. We have these four big beads. And I'll, I'll do this real quickly. Lee Farm. This is a uh, on the National Register of Historic Places. It's a farmhouse built in 1836. Uh, it was going to be developed uh, into a, uh, a big office complex, and uh, through efforts of city, county, state, uh, it is now a Durham City Park, and the buildings have been protected. Sandy Creek Park, former sewage treatment plant, uh, built in 1927 to serve Duke. Closed in 1980 because it was called Old Stinky for uh, some very good reasons. And uh, it was up for sale by the city. And Ken Coulter persuaded the city not to sell it, but to make a park out of it, uh, 103 acres of just fabulous natural land. Chapel Hill Road Park, north of Githens Middle School. We tend to call it the Nouveau Bottomlands Park. It's real low. It's hard to... We have boardwalks, it's sort of hard to hike because the water keeps coming up, but it's got some of the, the real biological diversity, the big trees, the uh, bottom-led hardwoods that you just don't find anywhere in, uh, in Durham County. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Where are the boardwalks in that area? Uh, behind the, uh, uh, the uh, orthopedic, uh, uh, Triangle Orthopedics, There's a, that's where the trail starts. It, it, it's a trail then becomes a boardwalk. Hollow Rock, uh, this was up, uh, as they say, where uh, uh, the New Hope crosses 15501, or uh, Irwin Road. Uh, this was bought through really a uh, uh, public subscription and also state money from both counties and uh, it's, it's not open yet, but it's going to be a fabulous park. And it has the old store, which many of you may remember. And they tore down the old store when they widened, they replaced the bridge. But it turned out they didn't tear down the old store. The old store is in somebody's backyard. <laughs> We're going to move it back. We're going to make it a museum. Over the years, something like $5 million of land and easements have been either purchased or have been um, given to us in the course of negotiating with developers. I'm going to just stop there. Uh, we have a lot of challenges. We have land that is going to be developed. You probably saw the, the uh, timbering along 15501. That's all private land. Triangle Transit Authority has a plan to build the light rail system right across the New Hope Bottomlands. We have come up with an alternative proposal, which they're studying to put it right along 15501. This is going to come to a head in a few months. Uh, but we don't want to see this 
terrific natural area have pylons with trains going back and forth at regular intervals. Uh, in the parks, we are working very hard to make these parks have personality, to be usable, and uh, I think if you go to Sandy Creek Park, you can see the result of thousands of volunteer hours and a very, very small amount of city and county money that uh, they have been working with. So I'll stop there, but uh, uh, I, uh, our approach has been very different from the New Hope and LRB Creek. But each one of these, I think, has uh, some merits, and it's interesting. All three of them seem to have worked pretty well. Thanks. Hi, I'm, I'm Chris Dreps. I'm the director of the Elderly Creek Watershed Association. I know I've been introduced already, but. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach tonight than, than what you've heard. Uh, if you want to talk to me more about Ellerbee Creek Watershed Association afterwards, I'll be happy to. I have lots of information. I'll talk a lot about our preserves, and that's not going to be my focus tonight. You've heard of uh, Eurocentric histories, um, heard of uh, people-centric histories. Well, tonight you're going to hear a creek-centric history of Ellerbee Creek. And um, I'm going to start, where's that little pointer? Oh, right here. Okay. Thanks, Bob. I'm going to start with uh, something you probably saw when you were in school. And then I'm not going to do a lot of this, but or maybe I'm going to start with it. We'll see. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Anybody recognize this? <laughs> Okay, so this is something my daughter did in fourth grade. She had to draw this, and it's the hydrologic cycle. And I just want you to get that in your mind. I mean, it's, it's the idea that most of our water is evaporating or transpiring from land, plants, um, evaporating from the ocean, and that runs a cycle. And no matter where you look on Earth, no matter what creek you look at, we can think about a creek that way. And I'll be talking about that some more tonight. Um, I'm no historian, and you'll certainly know that by the end of this presentation. But uh, I want to also give you another concept as we get going, and that is uh, from a watershed manager's perspective, that's what I do, um, is the idea of reference condition. And I've got a couple good quotations here um, from Anderson, um, History of Durham County. The overwhelming presence was the forest, endless dark and filled with bird and beast and deep in soil, and deep soil and beach timber. And this was to describe an area um, just to the south or in the Ellerbee Creek watershed, um, Bennett Place, near Bennett Place. Um, when we know that the Piedmont at this time was dominated by Sioux speakers, such as the Eno, the Okanichi, Saponi, Sisipaal, <coughs> Shikori, um, and we also know that um, John Lawson, who explored this area, might have referred to LRB when he called it the Pretty Rivulet, and that's from a history that John Shelf put together. I, know, I thank Bob for bringing this up, but um, I just want to add a little bit. This is the up, this is a map of the Upper Noose or Falls Lake watershed, right? Falls Lake, and this is a map of the soils with highly expansive clays forming first water tables, otherwise known as the Triassic Basin that he was talking about, and. Um, there's where Ellerby Creek sits. So you can see Ellerby Creek is mostly within that Triassic Basin, almost entirely, except for those little upper portions that some of us have the, the privilege to know, um, which we call the headwaters. So what are reference conditions in our area? This, 
goes for Ellerby Creek, it goes for Eno River, it goes for Sandy Creek. If you look at um, studies from Hill Forest and studies from um, Northern Durham, uh, two thirds of the water when it rains in a forested condition go right back up into the atmosphere. It never makes it past the trees. And that's really what drives the, the hydrologic cycle. And only about a quarter of that annually gets through the shallow surface, really does not run on the surface water. People talk about the surface water runoff. In the forest, it, it doesn't exist. It only exists in the small creeks and streams. Because in the forest, you don't get that overland flow. What you get is water moving through through the soils and into streams. This is how Ellerby Creek looked for millennia. I could stop <coughs> now and I would be telling you the great majority of the history of Ellerby Creek. But I won't stop. You may wish I did. But, um, and and another, another thing is that our pre-colonial stream systems had in abundance were, were small headwater streams. And the whole idea of headwaters are these very small streams. When you're walking through the forest, they may not really be running except for when it rains or at certain times of the year. And when a couple of these, what they call first order streams meet, they form a second order stream. That's just a system that's used to, to describe, to help scientists who think about streams a lot think about what a headwater stream would be. So these first and second order streams are the headwater streams. And two thirds of the stream length in our country is headwater stream. And those are the very streams that a lot of our rules don't protect. So when we talk about the new buffer rules and things like that, they don't protect those first order streams. That's another issue, that's another talk. Um, based, no, I won't say that. So here's, here's what I, I have a map here from, um, 1867-68, put together by memory. And, and the mid-1700s until the Civil War was a period when Durham was settled by farmers and then a hamlet began on what was to become Durham. Gene Anderson's history of Durham County calls that part, that early era, the Rip Van Winkle era. Um, from Ellerby Creek's point of view, this era is primarily characterized by the deforestation of the watershed. The forests were yielding to farms built by a wave of immigrant farmers from European backgrounds and slaves of African descent. A smaller population of native people that had been living on the bounty of the forest was replaced by people with the goal of removing the forest and growing crops. So one of the things that's interesting from this is, so here's, so Bob talked about, Bob talked about the, the railroad, right, being sort of the, the establisher of Durham. And you see it already. You see Main Street, and I guess this is what's Chapel Hill Street, and this is the old Five Points, right? This is a farm. So we're talking 150 years ago, this is downtown Durham. Here's the loop. <laughs> it only go one way. And right here it says, I'm gonna try to remember what it says here. Uh, this, oh, by the way, these were all springs. These were, these showed spring fed. This is Goose Creek, which is a tributary of Ellerby Creek. This is probably what was, is South Ellerby Creek. It's getting so much attention now because of the whole wetland proposed at Duke Diving Fitness Center. This was a little pool. Um, the map says small pool used for baptism by Baptists <laughs> and Methodists. <coughs> and note here along Goose Creek, that it says original forest. I wish I could only know what he meant by that. So, what happened to this? You know, what, what happened to the creek during these years? Um, based on 
you know, here's our water balance again at the top. That's just showing you the same thing I've already mentioned, but in a different, with a different view. Um, and one at the bottom to reflect the post-agricultural situation. Um, notice that the amount of evaporation and transpiration has been reduced. This is based on research that happens now, of course, on farms and farmlands in the area. Um, notice that surface water runoff has been greatly increased. Um, during almost every storm, there are literally gully washers occurring, and this causes a massive erosion problem for the creek. By the way, what percentage of forest soil is air of a healthy forest soil? 50%. That's not happening in this situation anymore. And so not only we're losing this, we're losing what used to be moving under that nice forest soil very slowly toward the creek. And the amount of water making it into the stream is greatly increased. This happens rapidly in a slug of water. It's, they're very erosive and it destroys the habitats where critters live and stops the plants from performing the service of slowing and cleaning the water. So the legacy of this period of deforestation can be seen throughout our forests now. Um, anywhere you happen upon small headwater streams that have five foot deep channels, um, you've probably seen that if you've walked in some of our woods. That is totally not natural. What you're seeing is you know, this and this. This is from our Beezy Farm Preserve. Uh, small second order stream. You know, if you fall on that, you're going to break your leg. It's seven feet deep. It's eight feet deep. Massive amounts of sediment that's moved from uplands, and when it gets to those flatter areas, it stops. And so you see the streams full of sediment. That used to be the farm right there. Um, and then post, so it, post Civil War, uh, Ellery Creek saw a boom, urbanization. And I won't. I don't mean, you probably all, people in this room probably know more about this history than I do, but the tobacco boom post-Civil War um, led to a system of roads that was really started in earnest in town by, the eight, by 1880. And what I was really interested to find is that when they started building those roads, they were already building stormwater pipes. That's a very important change in the history of Ellaby Creek that I'll talk more about. <clears throat> so, uh, of course, we have our mills, Pearl Mill, Irwin Mills, or Pearl Mill is now uh, part of what's owned by Duke uh, over at Trinity Avenue, where the old Duke Diet and Fitness Center YMCA is. Um, Irwin Mill, of course, that's now Harris Teeter and um, some other development. Um, Walltown, Old West Durham, Watts Hospital, Glendale Trinity. These were all developed during this era. It wasn't until 1934 that we got the wastewater treatment plant, right? So during this period, um, we were putting everything in stormwater pipes. We were putting the streams in pipes. And if you think about it, we went 50 years building those pipes, and it wasn't until the 30s, I'm sorry, it wasn't until the 30s that we had a wastewater treatment plant. No small wonder people were putting the creek in a pipe, because it was running full of stinky, nasty stuff. Dye was coming out of those, um, out of those um, mills. I, I, I firmly believe that's why a lot of Ellery Creek is in a pipe now. So I'm gonna show you a couple slides here. And I'm going to start with an area. Do any of you all recognize this area? Who, who, we have the where did the money Fort. come for the, for the wastewater plant? Was that local money or federal money? I have no idea. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer. Maybe some other, maybe some other people can answer that after the presentation. The this is the Williams Water Treatment Plant, built in 1917. <laughs> um, here is Ellery Creek through what is already, in 1940, Hill and Dale Golf Course, right? Uh, here's Crowsdale Farm. And this is what's now the Ellerby Creek Watershed Association 17 Acre Woods Reserve. Notice how straight this is, right? Remember how 
Sinui you saw on New Hope Creek or the Eno River on their beautiful maps with meanders. We a lot of times blame the Army Corps of Engineers for our straightening, but I believe that we started the straightening. Our farmers did it, we did it, we wanted, and it's very easy to move Elegy Creek. It didn't have all those rocks in your way because it's in the Triassic Basin. And so right here is one of, is Durham's original water main. If you've ever been on the 17 acre wood, the West Elegy Creek Trail, why is the trail so close to the creek there, you wonder? <coughs> because it's protecting the water main from the creek. So here's 1955, same location. Okay, we're gonna go back, there's 40, there's 55, right? Get your eye to that, try to look, for, look at the streets around to the north and to the south. Now we're growing, right? What was already kind of laid out and platted, now becomes built with houses by the 50s. Watts Hospital, Hillendale neighborhood to the south there. I mean, look at all the houses now. 1972, there's 55, there's 72. So by 72, up in that part of North Durham, we're really very urban. Oh, 1955, I forgot to add. That's Highway 70. Wasn't there in 1940. It is Highway 70, which becomes 85, right? So what's happening um, during this period? Uh, the urbanization, of course, uh, has changed our water balance a little more. We have even less evapotranspiration. We have even more runoff. We're seeing more stuff moving through pipes like this, getting to the creek. And... Um, what we've created is a system of directly connected urbanization to our creek with all the pipes. And, by, and I wish I had some maps of that from earlier, but I have it for 2005. So here's our 2005 situation. You can see the creek here in blue, and these are tributary streams feeding. All these orange are our stormwater pipe system, right? So what this does is it creates areas that I say are directly connected to Ellerby Creek, right? So we built all these houses in, in order to bypass the mess we've made of our own yards, we get it straight to the creek. And, and, and that's just how it, how it <coughs> developed. Here's another spot. This is Broad Street, right? I don't know if anybody in here knows the name of what these were. They were tobacco warehouses. They were, yes. but I don't know what the name of it was. If anybody, it's where North Point, where North Point Mall is sort of down here. Um, this is what, this is now the medical park off of Duke Street. Duke Street is now here, and we'll see that later. Here's Stadium Drive, where the Stadium Drive is, and the, where the stadium now is, County Stadium. Here's Roxborough, right? Look at how Ellerby Creek looks through here. This is the rocks, a property that I'm happy to say we expect very soon to be protecting. Most, one of the most beautiful spots on Ellerby Creek because it's an area where we have an outcrop of rocky, rocky stream. It's just incredibly beautiful. And I hope you get to see it very soon. But look at the meanders here. Now look at 1955. So there's 40. 55, you begin to see, you know, we're a little more north, a little more away from the neighborhoods. Um, really not a big change there. 1972, now look, I've drawn, I've kept, in 1972, I've kept that meander drawn from 1955. Look what happens. And this is by, by this time, this is what's happening all over Ellaby Creek. We're straightening the stream. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has come in. <coughs> it's, uh, it's not just the Army Corps of Engineers. It's city projects. It's state road projects. Anytime the stream needs to be straightened, we straighten it. Why not? It helps take all that stormwater we're pouring into the creek, keep it from flooding, which is great for the creek, but very bad for us 
because we built our houses so close to the creek, and, and it moves it right downstream, right down to Falls Lake. And so, you know, this is, this is just another example of that history. Um, we get to 2005, and so my drawing's a little off here, I'm sorry about that, I should, probably should have removed it, but again, you see the Duke Street, you see the neighborhoods getting closer now, you see, um, condo, um, I'm sorry, these are condominiums, I believe, here. So, um, what does all this mean? Now, I'm going to not bore you too much with this one, but here's, here's Ellaby Creek stream monitoring at Club Boulevard. This is hydrologic monitoring, hydrographic monitoring. There's the discharge on, here's our discharge, how much water is moving through the creek, cubic feet per second. And here's a, a year, a time period of a year. It's about a 13 square mile area flowing to Ellaby Creek. And this is Mountain Creek near Bahama. Same 13, about 13 square mile area. Each time, each one of these peaks represents when it, when it rained and the water rose, the water rose, the water rose. What do you notice? We got more peaks here, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have more rainfall. We have the same rainfall as we have up here. It's because of that, that's, that's the legacy of, of the urban development of Ellaby Creek. Is that every time we get a decent sized rain, three quarters of an inch, half an inch, the creek's getting sort of just pounded with a bunch of stormwater. And the legacy of that is um, that uh, we have eight foot, 10 foot deep channels that were originally probably back before back in the 1700s or before we started farming them, were probably things you could jump across or you could just step across. All that sediment, where does it end up? It ends up down at Falls Lake. And some interesting studies uh, have shown that uh, in Ellaby Creek, 58% of the sediments that are, anytime um, storm samples are done in the water, 58% of the sediment that can be gathered in a water sample is from the channel of the creek. It's erosion from the channel of the creek, from, from this. So that's the legacy of urban development. And if you don't believe that trash and sewer and, uh, and other pollutants are, are washing down, then just go down to the trestle, the train trestle near I-85 in Ellaby Creek, and you'll see the plastics. So what we've created is a very highly efficient system for moving our trash away from us. Um, now I don't mean to be, this is not meant to be too much of a downer, I'm just, this is a, you know, on and on and on, right? You know, Houston, we have a problem. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about the future of LMB Creek, and I think talk about the future uh, in a new era. Uh, we begin with the past. And I think some really important things that have happened for Ellaby Creek, the wastewater treatment plant, the, the north side wastewater treatment plant uh, was constructed in 1934. Um, in the 1960s and 70s, you know, we have to pay tribute to people who were changing things then. Ellaby Creek still hadn't seen the effects probably in a lot of ways, um, but we passed Federal Clean Water Act that is really has really set the stage for a lot of things that came after. National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System sounds boring, sounds federal, sounds like a rule, but it's the reason our Northside Treatment Plant is now a wastewater treatment facility that is operating at a very high level and removed and and at some point in the history of this facility, the water that came out of the facility was cleaner than LB Creek. I'm glad to say that that's not the case as I understand it now. The, our Durham Stormwater Utility, that $5 a month you pay, that was born in the 1990s, and that is a very important, I believe, piece of Ellaby Creek's history, and I'll tell you why now. I'll tell you in just a minute. You can't, there were many other uh, acts, um, the nutrient-sensitive water management strategy for the noose, um, the noose buffer rules were established. We didn't require buffers to be protected, and now we do. This is, you know, so the future of Ellaby Creek is happening now, has been happening, 
um, improvements have been being made. In 1999, Ellery Creek Watershed Association was formed. Steve Hiltner went out on in Watts Hospital and Dale neighborhood in a very overgrown patch, weedy patch of 20 acres of forest, and he just started pulling down invasives, invasive plants. And some people came by and said, what are you doing? Who pays you? And he said, nobody. <laughs> and so a few of them started paying him. And before you know it, we were, Equal was protecting that piece of property and owned it and had formed a 501c3 nonprofit. And now we own 340 acres. Um, so, and we do a lot of other things as you'll see. I want to talk about the future a little bit more. This is a vision of Ellaby Creek. This is downtown Durham. This is that same area where I showed you on a map earlier from 150 years ago. Down the loop. This is a map of green infrastructure opportunities, right? Green infrastructure. Innovative stormwater management practices that will be the way we turn back the tide of the stormwater and water quality problem and start cleaning up our creek. Um, the Green Infrastructure Partnership was created to envision a future Ellerby Creek with a high level of implementation of green roofs, fire retention, rain gardens, rainwater harvesting, permeable pavement, and other such practices. Um, you know, we've all, you know, the history of Ellerby Creek has already been written here to some degree, but we have opportunities. And so I love this slide. This is a slide from Philadelphia that shows an area that could be downtown Durham. I mean, this looks a lot like parts of downtown Durham. And Philadelphia also decided that it was going to turn the tide on its water quality issues and create green infrastructure. And so this is their vision for 2025. And I, I strongly believe, and I think a lot of people in the Ellaby Creek Watershed Association believe that in order to clean up Ellaby Creek and create a, a more a water balance that's more fair to the creek and more fair to the people and a greener community, this is going to be a big part of what has to happen in Ellerby Creek. So just some photos of those kinds of practices, you know, bioretention areas. You know, these are all innovative stormwater treatment. It looks really like beautiful landscaping to me, but but that's really what it is. Green streets. All this water is running in from the street, getting treated. Same here, same from the parking lot. Getting treated before it goes to the creek. Trying to do what nature used to do. Uh, rainwater harvesting. Green walls, green roofs, rainwater harvesting. And finally, I just want to say that um, I think most importantly, people are beginning to engage with nature again in Ellerby Creek. You know, and once the 55,000 people who live in the watershed uh, and, and, and all over Durham get to know the creek, there's a better chance they will love it. And that's what we hope the future of Ellerby Creek is. one thing since Kristen talked about some of the fun stuff that Ellerby Creek does and we did mention the Eno River the festival for the Eno so I will have to mention the Beaver Creek pageant which happens to be first Saturday in June and we say it's like the festival sort of but like because it is but we are younger and dirtier than the Eno and so is this event so I hope you all will come and experience a very unique um Celebration that honors a victory over DOT again that saved a bunch of cute little beavers and started um, a neighborhood uh, festive event. So I'm going to please let me bring the microphone to you if you have a question. Yes. You know, Joanne, I hadn't realized that until you said this, but we, we are starting our own tradition in Sandy Creek Park. We had our, our first frog sex event a week ago. <laughs> Hear the mating of the thousands of frogs out there with a frog expert. So maybe we can turn this into a fundraiser or something. <laughs>
I think we really have sadly, sadly neglected that. I think we've been going for the, the big fish when you see a, you know, a 230 unit uh, apartment building at, at 20 units an acre being built right along the creek. That pales in comparison with somebody building you know, a house or two up in Orange County. But having said that, you can have significant impacts and uh, we should really be uh, paying more attention to it. Um, the second one, I, I really am pretty convinced that uh, Duke is going to retain Duke Forest. I think that uh, that one little blip in the the uh, the 80s, where they you know brought in the Urban Land Institute, had it uh, kind of appraised, looked at alternative uses. They got a lot of blowback, and it wasn't just from neighbors; it was from alumni, it was from their board of trustees. I don't think they want to go through that again. I hope I'm right. I don't think I have to be the mic, but I'll probably blow people's ears out if I use the mic. So, if you were to name the number one threat, each of your groups have been founded on a great success defending a great resource. If you were going to name the number one threat that you see in the future for each of those feats, what would it be? try to do two different types of threat. One is I think that right now Ellery Creek is getting, it was really interesting to see, uh, just to illustrate my point, it was really interesting to see Bob's slide on the natural heritage areas. Yeah. Where was yeah. Ellery Creek, right? And that, and that, you know, it's totally Triassic Basin, so it doesn't get a lot of attention. It's been affected strongly. What's making people work so hard to clean up Ellaby Creek right now besides this great organization that we have here and the fact that it's Durham and there are people who are willing to get behind it. We have some pretty strong rules in place. Uh, the Falls Lake nutrient rules. I, I'd say that in the short run, immediately, that um, my greatest fear is probably our legislature. Um, in the long run, and more seriously, and more seriously in the long run, um, not more seriously, but more, maybe a deeper problem, is how few children actually know anything about nature these days, how get out and touch a turtle, or are free to roam, or go and kill a few fish in the stream when they're 11 years old and learn to love those fish and then respect them later in life and will actually go out and do something to protect them. If they have no idea how beautiful nature is, they don't really care. And I, that's, that's one of my greatest fears and I think we see that strongly in Ellerby Creek uh, where 55,000 people live and a lot, most of them don't ever see Ellerby Creek or Eno River or New Hope Creek. I am, um, not sure what's the problem. Uh, as, as Chris started to speak, I came to the same, the exact same place that he was. And I think that what's happening in Raleigh in the legislature is really a threat on a lot of different levels. I mean, Diener is not the organization that it was. Um, they, the legislature is trying his, 
really made moves to hamper local governments that want to do more environmental protection. The Natural Heritage Program that um, provided funding and the Natural Heritage Trust Fund that provided funding and the Natural Heritage Program that worked to create the, both the Durham and Orange County inventories of natural places has been decimated. Um, the Natural Heritage Trust Fund is gone and the staff at the Natural <coughs> Heritage Program, there's almost nobody left. So I think that's a terrible thing because in the long run, that's who was helping to identify the places that are so important. And they're, we're not going to know anymore and nobody's going to care. That's, that's been a real resource for the state. Um, it's also true that there's not as much money to the state used to be not that bad about providing money to do protection of stream corridors. There are rules now, but the rules are under threat. I mean, Jordan Lake rules <coughs> are on hold, and it's all, I think it's, that's probably the worst. Um, there are also, and part of that, too, is as the economy recovers, there's more development pressure, and um, Chris's area, Elby Creek area, it's already developed, but there are still places that, that damage could be done, both on New Hope and in, on the Eno. It is also true what Chris said, that it's so important to get younger people <coughs> involved and get them outdoors, because it really does make a difference. You can see it when it happens. What is well, I, yeah, I agree with everything that I've heard, but uh, uh, I'm older than these folks. And we have gone through cycles. And I think we are at the, in some ways, in terms of the legislature and all, at the bottom of a cycle. But in terms of public perception, I think we are really building up to where we were in the late 1960s when we did some pretty amazing things with regard to uh, cleaning up our air and water. And uh, I really think that uh, you have only to track Creek Week, which has just, it's grown uh, exponentially over the last four years, and I predict it's gonna keep growing and growing. And I think if we can put the focus on the relation of people to the water and, uh, as Chris and Robin have said, get the, the kids involved. I really think that we're going to uh, continue to clean these places up. You know, these, these streams were really, really polluted 50 years ago. And we have cleaned them up to a significant extent. And uh, I think we're in a temporary dip, just as we were in the, the early Reagan years. Remember James Watt? But I think we're going to come back. So uh, see, if I'm, see if I'm right in 20 years. I just want to say thanks to all three of you. I've learned a ton today, and you're all an inspiration, and I appreciate the work that you're doing and for sharing the, the histories with us and for keeping the, um, keeping the good work up. Thank you. Well, I'm sure I'm <laughs> But Laura's doing Creek Week, so I think that's <laughs> <laughs> applauded for that. Robin from 
being on the go. This one was a frog. Carolina, the Museum of Science, they don't have the tails on them, though. Because they say, that, well, they say that they don't preserve them. This one's for